There have always been uh, boundaries uh, on freedom of speech and of the press. Uh, at different times, they've been interpreted uh, more or less uh, uh, strictly. I mean, we've always had libel law, for example. Um, people have always been able to sue when uh, false things were said about them, which harmed them. Um, however, in 1964, the Supreme Court, in one of its greatest opinions, New York Times against Sullivan, basically decided that there was, in the interest of protecting freedom of speech, uh, a need to expand beyond uh, old law. Like when I was in law school, for example, we were taught libelous material isn't protected by the First Amendment. Well, that's still true, but what the court said in 1964 was in defining what's libelous, we have to take into account the First Amendment. And in particular, when you speak about a public person, a public figure, a public official, uh, there can't be a winning libel suit against you unless you, you basically lied, said something you knew was false, or you suspected uh, wasn't uh, uh, untrue. That's just one example. Uh, in the area of national security, uh, we have some statutes which make it a crime to publish uh, details about uh, the building of atomic weapons. Um, and uh, in the area of national security, the government has sought to, and I would say has established, the proposition that if they can get to court, with respect to material which would really, really cripple the country uh, in, a, in, a, in the sense of making it impossible uh, for, the, for the country and its people uh, to be safe from imminent harm caused as a result of the speech itself, why then the Supreme Court has said uh, that there can be a prior restraint, an injunction uh, against the speech. Uh, but not much. I mean, uh, America has always been the, the country in the world with more protection for speech, more protection for religion, those two areas in particular, more protection for freedom of the press, which together with freedom of speech uh, have a sort of a common body of law uh, than, than any country uh, in the history of the world. Uh, that's not to say we haven't had real and real big First Amendment problems sometimes, and First Amendment deprivations sometimes. But, but taken as a whole, it's been really uh, an astonishing, a breathtaking degree of personal freedom for people, for organizations, for institutions uh, to have their say. The press now is, uh, in a sense, more like it was around the time of the Revolution. Um, our revolution than, than what it was 30, 50 years ago. Uh, it is becoming more partisan. Um, that's, uh, of course, especially true of cable television. But, but uh, the, the, they print press more so uh, than it used to be. Uh, but it's primarily on cable uh, and on the internet, that you see again uh, and again um, definitions of uh, what's news and definitions of what's true, which seem to be based almost exclusively uh, on the political and ideological views uh, of the speakers. And so what, what had been the and to, to some extent, of course, still is, the journalistic uh, ethic, uh, not always fulfilled, but, but the recognized ethic of impartiality, of uh, reporting the news and being absolutely free to comment about it, but basically not turning newspapers over to, for, for purely partisan use. Uh, it is something that, that we've been uh, moving away from, and, and I think it, it does not, uh, not profit us. I mean, the idea that people 
uh, sit at home now and now have this wonderful choice, which is good, to see you know anything they want, any views they want, but that the effect of that is that so many people only see things they agree with and are only reinforced in their pre-existing views rather than being open to learning uh, about what's going on. There are some facts uh, out there. I mean, not everything is sheer opinion. There, on, on some matters, there is a truth. Uh, there, are, there are notions of accuracy. There are facts. And I do have some concern that, that we are moving away from that. Mm -hmm.